What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking back in on a title called Dark Light. We checked in on this game about a year ago when it was still in early access. Didn't have a chance to check out the 1.0 because it was actually in close proximity to the last coverage, and I usually like to space things out by six months to a year before I recheck in on a game that I've already covered. But Dark Light is one of those games that I think aesthetically really stood out to people. It's a game that looks really good. Like, it's a game that's gorgeous to play and has some really cool character models. And when it released, it got kind of like mixed reviews, you know, lightly positive reviews. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, don't like that right there. Apparently, the pa these are like ghost platforms. Is that what it is? Yeah, it looks like these are like magical ghost platforms. But as I was saying, this was a game that released to kind of like, uh, you know, partially positive reviews, I guess, when it came out in 1.0. It was a couple months after my coverage, so I didn't get a chance to check in on it again. We're doing it now because the game just received a giant 1.1 update, which added a whole bunch of new mechanics to the game. This is actually a update that completely retooled a lot of the aspects of the game. And so I think it's time for a reappraisal as far as theme goes or as far as what is Dark Light. Uh, Dark Light is a game where humanity has basically been exterminated. We are all gone. Uh, there's only a few settlements left, and we huddle in the dark underneath the soil deep down in the ruins of old sewer systems in the hopes that the things that creep around will not find us and get us. We have no means of fighting back. We don't really have any chance of taking more territory, and we're effectively just like waiting to starve and go extinct. Uh, your main character in this game is a hunter who is a rare breed of individual whose job it is to go up to the surface and find things that people on the underground need in order to keep surviving. And in order to do that, you're given firearms, you are given weapons, and of course you have access now to cyberware, which is the new thing that they've added on in. Uh, they've decided to take this game like strongly in a Diablo direction. So at this point in development of the game, I would actually say that this game is nestled somewhere firmly in between like Grimdark Maple Story and something, I know that's a weird thing to say out loud, isn't it? Grimdark Maple Story and maybe something like Dark Souls. It's kind of like in between those two points. And so let's check the game on out. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description where you can check the game out. On top of that, you can also take a look down there if you wanted to find a link to my Twitch stream, my Discord, all that kind of stuff that a guy like me is forced to have uh, when you work on the internet just in case you needed to get a hold of me or you needed to talk to me or you wanted to hang out live where I frequently play the games that I've played here on the channel. There it is. So Darklight, what is new about it? Well, they've added in a couple, actually they've, so from what I remember, I feel like they've completely and totally redone the UI for the most part. Like I think the UI has gone through a lot of changes. And then on top, I gotta beat this guy down real fast. And then on top of that, they've also added in a gearing system that is similar to something you would have seen in a game like Diablo 2. Uh, no longer does your character just rely upon Dark Souls style levels of like strength and intellect and things like that in order to get stronger. You now also have gear slots where you can put in cyberware. So as you can see, I've got a belt right there that gives me plus one to strength, which is gonna increase my melee damage. I've got a fine chest of absorption, which increases is my blood stat. Blood stat increases your fire resistance. It also gives us some poison resistance. We've got extra health right here along with some more attack damage. Right here we've got five intellect which increases our mana. There's a little bit of a typo in there. This is one of those rougher games like, like I, Divine Cybermancy, where it's gonna have typos and it's gonna have rough stuff. Alright, that's the uh, way that it goes. It's just one of those titles. Uh oh, am I coming up on a boss right now? I think I am. Okay, I think we're coming up on a boss. So let's see what we've got going on. On top of that, you've got abilities. You've got like a little drone uh, that you can kit out and make strong. What is that thing? Bro, get away from me. What are you? I'm just gonna like shoot you. I have lots and lots and lots of ammo. And so shooting feels like a strong play right now. What's he gonna do? Oh, okay, yep, that was not great. Okay, looking good. Uh, he's going to come back like so. Oh, he went mid with that one. Okay. Oh, God. Okay, everything is bad. Oh, my God. Okay, so light him up with some of those. Give him the old blicky. Yeah, give him the blickinator. 
What's he gonna do? Okay, he went low. Dude, that's so... F oh, he's got a shield. Oh, no. What does the shield do? There's so many loud and terrifying things happening on screen right now. I'm just gonna give his zombies the blappers. And hopefully we get them all. Oh, I've run out of arena. That's not good. Okay, stay back. Oh, there's another zombie right there. There's two more zombies. Oh, my God. We have so many things potentially going wrong right now. Kill him. Grab the heal. Okay, I've got no stamina left. Falling back. We should be good on that side. Yeah, this is fairly intense. This is my first boss fight. Like, I'm glad that the pattern seems to be, you know, obvious. Okay, take him down. Doesn't seem to be incredibly difficult right now. I'm going vertical, man. I'm going vertical. Okay, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Give it to me here. Okay, we've got him down pretty low, man. He's not dead yet, but he's getting there. I just, I need more. Oh, we got the shield back up again, dude. Give me my armor, give me my armor. Okay, so he's going to bring back a whole bunch of zombies. I'm going to endeavor to do my best here. Oh, yeah. Did I mention that I have, like, a magical lightning blink like the Thunder God? I forgot about that. You have special abilities in this game. However, the way that they're hotkeyed is a little bit weird for a PC game. It takes some getting used to. Oh, I ran out of energy, and then I got thumped. Oh, that counted. Okay. Fair enough. Dude, I want this guy to die so badly. Ow. I thought I could time it. I was wrong. My old man reflexes weren't good enough. All right. Fall back. I think just getting out of the way is our best chance here. Heal myself. This game does have an Estus flask. Right now, I have like six of them. Sorry if it sounds like I'm talking really loud during this sequence. My volume is up way, way, way too high inside my headphones. Right. Oh, he's down. Nice. Hell yeah. We got him. Good stuff. Uh, so all those things he dropped are shards. Shards are... They're kind of like raw currency, I guess. So you can't spend shards from what I've seen so far. You have to, like, trade your shards at brokers that exist on the map in weird random places. Like, you'll find a broker way up on the top of, like, an old dilapidated skyscraper. You know what I mean? There's... There's... There's currency traders in weird spots and also at every campfire. You swap your, your shards out for actual spendable money. I don't know why the conversion is there. I also haven't died yet, so I don't know if you drop shards versus dropping currencies. When you get currencies, it says that you bank them when they get converted into spendable. So I assume... Oh yeah, dude. I got like a... Like an ability, apparently. The Sonic Core. You now have the ability to dash. Yeah, so the game seems to have multiple talent trees now that I don't remember being in the game previously. I think I remember the drone, but honestly, they redid a lot of the UI too, so some of these things may have existed, but they look different. And since, like, I'm a very visual memory kind of person, that's messing with me. But you have a drone down here. Uh, the drone is that little guy above my head that's following me right now. It has various functions. When you press, like, various buttons, they will do various things. So yeah, now I've got a little ability that unlocked when you got the boss. So from what I've seen so far, all of this stuff is going to be kind of like you discover things, you find things, you defeat various bosses and mini-bosses, and it's going to unlock different abilities. Some of those abilities are linked to the drone that follows you around. So he gives me a concussive blast where I can blow guys up, and then he also gives me a dash now that I've killed that other boss. But some of them also seem to be linked to factions, and those factions have like shrines around. When you find their shrines, they give you the ability to unlock one of these things in their tree and so you'll see over here for the I forget the name of this faction I unlocked a lightning nova and I've also got what looks like tempest rage that I can fire at people I guess I can unlock pretty soon it looks like I need to be at Knights of the Diamond Order rank 2 and I also need to obtain the 113900X drone, I guess. Uh, this is one of those things about this game that I actually kind of like about it, is that a lot of stuff is really... Like I said, the game that I would compare this to is I, Divine Cybermancy. It's a game that's, like, wild. It's a game that's out there. It's a game that the core gameplay mechanics are like Diablo meets Don't Move. I have a gun being pointed at me. Fantastic. A Dark Hunter. Keep going through the door and you're going to find a train. It'll take you to the city of flesh. We'll meet again in the cargo bay. Oh, you're going back to the city. There is a city in this game. We can teleport back there whenever we find, like, uh, one of the teleport portals. We can go back to town and there's a whole bunch of vendors. 
There's a whole bunch of things you can buy, sell, trade, barter, level up, all kinds of goodies. So you're going to want to go back to town every now and again. And actually, I think the town's design is really cool. But as I was saying, this is one of those games that reminds me of I, Divine Cybermancy. And the reason it reminds me of that game is because, like, the core gameplay makes sense. In I, Divine Cybermancy, it was like run around and shoot guys. That's it. And this game, it's run around and hack and slash guys and explore and shoot guns at people, and there you go. But, like, all of the minutia and the little stuff, like the level-up systems and the way that you acquire new abilities and the way that you get new gear, it's all weird. Every single last bit of it is super weird and, and, like, hard to describe to somebody that hasn't just been playing the game and, in a tactile sense, just, like, figuring out what stuff does. I don't know. It's a difficult game to put on the register like that. It's the kind of game where the reload button is E for some reason instead of R, and the R button makes you change what flask you have out. It's just a, a strange game where... Is that going to come alive? Okay. Don't fight, just run! Oh. Is this supposed to be like a boss fight? I don't know what's going on right here, but there's a lot of dead people around. I feel nervous. Oh, it's a dragon. I see. Yeah, that could effectively be a problem. Ow, dude, the fire hurts so much. Okay, I don't want to be inside the fire anymore. I take it back. The fire was a terrible idea. Oh, there's a ladder right there. What does that do? Hold the utility key to use the health potion to regain part of your health when you need it. Press sw Oh, it's like a new type of potion that I just looted. Okay. But as I was saying, if the game would stop being so damn intense. Uh, this is the kind of weird game where nothing is explained to the player. And the things that are explained usually have like typographical errors or like syntactical errors in them. And so you just kind of got to like feel it out. But I think if you can make it through that process, this is actually kind of an interesting title that's playing around with some interesting ideas. It's not perfect by any means. Like, there are definitely things about it that are clunky and definitely designed for, like, consoles or controllers uh, would be the big thing for me. But it is a game that's just got a really, really shockingly good visual, visual style and has been an absolute joy to explore despite the clunkiness of the, the combat at some phases. Uh, we've got a shrine right here. I forget the name of this faction. It'd probably help if they put the name of the faction on here somewhere. They just give you the symbol, but we can unlock one of their things. Uh, so this, offensive def or this effective defensive shield reduces enemy attack damage in a brief time frame. Okay. Blood War Cry. Ranged weapons deal increased damage for a limited time and randomly deploys three throwable weapons. Probably go with the bloody war cry then, I guess. Oh yeah, I forgot I had little, I have little like drones that I can put out too. All right. I don't know what's inside this room. I don't even know what my goal is right now in this game. I just keep wandering around and finding bosses and the game keeps rewarding me for it. There's not really like a narrative except for like humanity is all dying and dead. Go out there and go get them, tiger. Like that's pretty much it. Uh, does that hurt me? It does. It does. Okay. I just wanted to check and make sure. Luckily enough, it was not instantaneously fatal. Let me go ahead and I'm going to take a little resty rest right here, dude. I'm going to get a Snickers in me. I'm going to drink a Mountain Dew, and we're going to get back to post-apocalyptic scary adventures. Uh, I'm going to convert my currency over. There we go. I think the more shards you save up, the more of a conversion you get. But I'm not, like, totally sold on that. Can I? Oh, I can't. Do oh, that's a grenade. Never mind. Okay, don't blow me up, please. So is that a ladder right there? I have such a hard time identifying ladders in this game. So we've got this big dog over here. I'm just going to lay into him real fast. There we go. He's down. The good news about those big guys is you can basically chain stun lock them forever if you can get in behind them. What does this new potion that I have do? I don't know what the new potion does. Oh, so this is like a, a built-in health potion. So this is actually an Estus flask, whereas if I press my R key, you can see the icon changing in the bottom left. Sorry, I don't have a mouse in this game because it's a game that's built for controllers. But anyways, you can see I have that orb right there that's red. That's a health potion that I just found while I was running around having adventures. This is a health potion that restores every time we rest, and we just always have it on us. So that would be the difference. The difference is minor, but it's actually kind of major. I don't know what this guy does. Um, ah, I knew it, dude. I knew it. I was looking at it like, is that thing going to, like, try to stab out from the wall and stick me? Like, what is it going to do? And then it shot at me. 
Oh, I can climb the underground jellyfish. Beautiful. What is that red thing right there? Does it do anything? I don't even know, man. The visual style of this game, though, just has me absolutely intoxicated. This is an utterly gorgeous game where they put a lot of effort into, like, I think they're pre-render sprites, from what I can tell, is I think everything in this game is like a, a pre-render sprite, which is a, a very rare thing that most games don't do any... Ow, booby trap. Most games don't do that anymore which is one of the reasons why I think so many people lost it when Hall of Torment or whatever that game was that came out that has that Diablo 2 style to it. It's because people like pre-renders, man. The thing about pre-renders, though, is that it's a massively labor-intensive way to design the visuals for a game, especially if there's any visual modification of the sprites, like Diablo 2 style, when you put on various armors and whatnot, then it becomes just a case of you have to put in every permutation and combination of gear that can possibly be there. This game doesn't have to worry about it too much. It's mostly weapon swaps, but lightning omen. Unleash a lightning aura. You cause periodic lightning strikes to nearby foes. Enhance this skill to increase the frequency of strikes. Yeah, I'm a lazy boy player. I would love to have that. That sounds great. Does it go on my one? All right, so we've got abilities and stuff we can swap out over here. As you accumulate abilities, they get added on into this menu. This menu also takes a second to figure out. You can't click and drag things to the hotbar where you want them. you got to, like, click on the slot, then click on that. Once again, uh, one of those things that's not really fully explained. You just kind of have to figure out the little weirdnesses and intricacies of the UI as you play. It it's going to be one of those things that will... Not like give you a full head scratch moment, but you will sit there and be like, I know that this works. How do I get it to work? There we go. We'll knock him out. Ooh, free bullets. Nice. I should probably swap out gear, too. I do have some other weapons and stuff that I can equip. I don't know if I... Oh, I got a new chest piece. The Soldier's Chest of Agility. Oh, cool. That'll increase my gun damage. Nice. Uh, go ahead and, I guess, swap that in. There you go. We've got a new pectoral implant right there. It's a, it's a pectoral implant, okay? It's not a boob job. I'm going to need everybody to stick with me on that. Pectoral implant, super manly, not a boob job. All right? Uh, we've got weapons as well. This is our weapons menu over here. Inside of our weapons menu, you can decide what sort of weapon you want to wield. Uh, so, like, I've got, for example, hand grenades, or you can have a drone. I've got the Blue Sorrow two-handed sword over here, so we could try that out. We've also got the Butcher's Hammer, so it looks like the bosses themselves have unique items. And it does come with a different attack animation. You love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. I'm actually kind of beat up right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quaff a couple potions. I'm going to quaff them real good. I'm going to quaff it out. This guy's a bank broker. Like I said, they show up in weird spots. I don't really have any currency to swap over right now, so I'm not going to worry about it too heavily. Wow, this thing. I should have swapped over to this sooner. This thing hits a lot harder. Give me my health potion back, too. It's got a little bit more reach on it as well. The downside is it kind of pops the enemy backwards, like pop, 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 and then it puts them outside your reach, so repeated combos get a little bit harder depending on the knockback. And so I don't know if this would be a weapon that I would run long term just based on just based on that factor. My shins have been annihilated. See, this is why this is why I keep my shins clad and I don't I don't rinse them. You don't go down there, dude. It's not necessary. Let's see here. We've got drone energy leech, kamikaze drones. That sounds pretty fun. I like the sound of kamikaze drones. That was an accident. Although I did like that grenade graphic. That looked pretty cool. How do I get my kami? How do I get my kamikaze drones out here? Oh, the kamikaze drones are already on my Q button. Do it, little buddies. I believe in you. I don't know if they're actually gonna kamikaze. Oh, I throw them at him. Okay, yeah, that's rad as hell. Oh, this guy's okay. He's more spry than the other ones. Oh, and he's got like flamey boots on, dude. Okay, I'm gonna need to be like up here, and then I'm just gonna kind of like. This actually kind of makes him 
a difficult dude to take down between the regeneration and the fire on the ground. That guy's kind of a headache. I don't know if those affixes are totally random that he gets added onto him, sort of like Diablo style or Last Epoch style, where, you know, you guys can have, your enemies can have rending and, like, energy orb and stuff like that. And we just got, like, a bad combination. But that's a tough one because the fire effectively covered up the area where he could be hit. That's nasty. I had to go through some potions to get that done. Uh, if you wanted to see town, I'm actually kind of curious where I am on the map right now. So I'm going to take a look. We'll go into the portal real fast. We are in the City of Flesh 3. Okay, the map is starting to fill out. If you want to know how big the map is, like that big right there. So it's probably taken me round about an hour to get this far into the map. Assuming that every zone is roughly the same, I don't know what the playtime is going to look here. But once again, this is conjecture and extrapolation based on the fact that I've cleared... Maybe like an eighth of the map in an hour. Probably like eight to ten hours, maybe. I don't know, though. That'd be one of those things to Google, maybe, before you move on. If you wanted to see the city, let's go there. I'll show you what the city looks like. So the city's over here. This is the city. I, I love the city design in this game. I think it strikes a really cool balance in between, like, Aeon Flux and in between I Divine Cybermancy and, like, Metro. Like, it gets those matched up really well. There are quest givers in this area. So we've got Etzli, the AI cyborg facilitator, who's, like, the last caretaker of humanity. Uh, she's got a bounty for us, and so it looks like she wants us to go and find the gemsmith in the southwestern sector of the City of Flesh. She's a master of imbuing gems with powerful energies. Yeah, this game has gem slots too, in case you were wondering. You can put different elements and things on your weapons. So if you wanted to do like a lightning sword swing, or if you wanted to do, you know, a flaming gunshot, you can absolutely do that. Uh, you also have like storage areas that you can use as with every other action RPG. Uh, it looks like you can exchange currency on this side just in case you wanted to do so. There are drone service stations where you can swap out your drone for other drones that you found in the field. There are shops. There are areas to level up. There are areas that have locked doors that require a key that you kind of need to remember for later when you find certain keys out on certain mini-bosses, and it doesn't tell you which one goes where. This is the level-up system. Anyone that's familiar with action RPGs or has played... Pretty much anything along the lines of uh, Dark Souls will recognize. Oh, I actually need some kind of special currency to raise that. Oh, in this game, they don't like... Okay, so, like, is that only for HP? No, it's for... Okay, so for HP and for stamina, you need a special resource once you level it up to a certain extent to level it up further. That's to stop people from, so like, I'm super guilty of this in Dark Souls. In Dark Souls, I always hard dump in the early of the game, like, stamina, because I tend to run, like, block builds, so, like, big shields, like, big tower shields, uh, so that I can tank boss hits and only lose, like, half my stamina, fire back, like, twice, dodge roll to the side, and then let it all come back and repeat. This game, they don't let you do that right at the outset of the game because, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty valid tactic. I spent all my monies, so unfortunately I can't buy any of the new cyberware that they added to the game with this patch. I do think that adding cyberware to the game was a really good idea. I'm glad to see that the developers themselves sort of feel like, so Crystal the Gemsmith is over there. City of Flesh 2, City of Flesh 3. It looks like maybe it wraps around? I don't know if like this is like City of Flesh 5 right here. Or if this is, like, a City of Flesh 3A. I don't know if going back to City of Flesh 3 is going to get us there to find the gemsmith. But I'm willing to try it. But so far, I've liked the game. There is definitely some clunkiness that exists inside of the combat. But I've found the world to just be so ridiculously well-designed and cool-looking and sort of intriguing. And the characters themselves to all be kind of like these dead, glowing-eyed, sort of fatalist, accepting that it's all over kinds of guys. That I, I think this really fits sort of the, the bleak sort of tone that I personally really identify with in games. And so I can kind of forgive some of the clunkiness that exists inside the combat. It's not that much clunkiness. But there is some clunk there, all right? Like, it's not like terminal levels of clunking. I don't want to go in the water with whatever that thing is. Aw, oh, dude! He can upchuck through the level. 
Okay, yeah, this was a mistake, and I should not have done it. I've already learned this lesson. I don't know why I decided to learn it again the hard way. I suppose that's just who I am. And now I am beat to hell. There we go. We'll pop that thing on in. Oh, another teleporter. Where does this one, out of curiosity, where does this one put us on the map? So to the right of us is more... I mean, I don't even know if it works like that. But I need to go to the left, and I need to get to that gate over there so that we can find the optional gemsmith quest. Dude, I just walked through that. I knew it was there, and I did it again. So upset with myself right now, dude. Just, like, not a happy camper with splat as a concept or as a being right now. Okay, so we need to figure out how we want to engage this guy. Um, throw some dr Wow, those really, really hurt. Those are super good. Those hit like a truck. I guess I just sort of ignored them because I was fighting a shield guy the first time I used them. And the shield guy just sort of like shrugged them off like they don't even matter because, you know, I hit the front facing of the shield. Seems kind of dubious, but I'm going to go for it because, you know, I'm a, I'm a champ down here. Actually, I think we already used that one. I wish the game had a mini-map, but it doesn't. Like, I wish it had a mini-map that kind of, like, filled out your fog of war. Oh, this is a terrible idea. That's a much better idea. That idea... That idea clacks. I should do that idea right there. So that idea worked out. Unfo another boot. These booby traps, man. I feel... I'm going through health potions... Oh, that guy got sucked up into the ceiling. Sucks to be him. Oh, God, they're invisible. Okay. Can't shoot them, neither. Uh, give me... Yeah, give me... Yeah, I'm just going to use these for the rest of the game. They don't seem to really have any plausible downside in their usage. Like, if every time I used it, I grew, like, a new lump or something that came out of my neck, I, I'd be worried about using them. But so far... There does not appear to really be any problem in their usage. Alright, so you first. You're down. Give me the health potion. Do I even re- Oh, ah! Okay, yep. Got boobity trapped again. I will I will deal with these other situations momentarily. That I think is a mana orb. Yeah, it's a mana orb, so we don't really need that right now, but I do appreciate another health orb. That's good. Where does this go? Mm. Don't like that. What does this do? Set respawn point. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So that's like a perspective thing right there. Like, I'm not exactly sure. Normally what you would want to do right here is when it swings over, you both want it to have an audio and a visual indicator that goes whooshing, whooshing, and the shing lines up with where you take damage at. Um, and then on the ground, you would want there to be like a puff of dust when the shing goes off to show the player kind of where that's at. I'm guessing it's purely visual. Like, I have to go under like that. It is purely visual. It's just the perspective that makes it feel weird. Uh, but anyways, apparently it's actually 100% just sprite visual. Just don't let that... So there's no foreground and background here that that thing is swinging into and out of. Like, just don't touch it. <laughs> I actually, I didn't expect it to be that old school. That's why it got me. Ooh, healing shrine, huh? Nice. Uh, Jim Smith, you down here? You want to maybe be my friend? I gotta swap this back over. Why is it not letting me swap back? Did it... Oh, that's weird. I don't have any of my skills inside of here. Huh. I guess it disabled my skills while I'm inside this area like it's a pure skill check, I suppose? I guess that's fair. 
Oh, thank God, dude. I need more health potions super bad. I haven't found the difficulty level of the game during the hour or so that I've played, like the two hours or so that I've played. I haven't found them to be that bad. Like, there are certain areas where you get got by booby traps and stuff like that, but like, eh, by and large, the game's fairly tactile. I think people that are looking for like a, a Bloodborne type experience, where the combat is highly tuned, and like, the game is very difficult all the way through, might be a little bit disappointed with this as a Souls-like action RPG. But to me, that's actually what I kind of like about it, is that I don't really have to try hard all the way through. I can just sort of enjoy the ambience and the atmosphere of the universe which is done like undeniably well. Hopefully that thing, okay, it falls down in the hole. I was hoping it would fall down in the hole, but I wasn't sure about it. But yeah, this is Dark Light. The game recently just got like a full overhaul patch where after release, the developers felt like they weren't satisfied with it. So they went back through and they redid a fat chunk of the UI. They did a bunch of the representational stuff over and not settling for that, they also added in a system where you get random procedurally generated loot that drops off enemies with random affixes on it and things of that nature. And so anyways, I think that's really cool of them to know that their game sort of like released, I guess, to like mixed reviews and to decide to add more depth and then to overhaul some of the things about it. By no means is this game perfect, but it is a game that I think is strikingly unique among all the things that are listed on Steam right now, visually and also thematically. And so I think that kind of got me hooked, despite the fact that it can have a little bit of a case of the clunky wonkies. Um, oh, I don't have, yeah, that's not great. Okay, yep, this could be a problem. I do have like a stun right there. I may have to do this all from the, from the hip, man. I don't want to, but these flame guys are an issue. They're a big issue. These flame guys are the worst. I hate them for the life of me, especially with two of them right there. I don't know how I get in there and get hits off. That's a toughie. Like, I think I just need to like isolate. They do have different speeds. So that might be what we wanna do. I guess I could throw down a drone. I haven't used a drone at all this entire time. Ow, dude, I'm getting just styled on put out another drone there we go i got one of them i sacrificed a little bit in order to, wow that flame hits you from pretty far back too what a what a tough enemy what an obnoxious enemy that guy that guy's a rough one but this is dark light i actually really enjoyed my checkup on this one normally checkups for me are kind of like matter of fact and par for the course where it's like okay let's boot up this game that i covered a year ago let's kind of run through the paces see what it's got going on but this felt like consequential enough of an update to where i kind of got into it like i'm enjoying myself right now uh, my name is splattercat i sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to today up on the chopping block we were messing around we were messing around with Dark Light, where I am now super dead. Uh, I will catch you all later. Thank you for spending your time with me, and I will catch you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the Indie Skillet. Bye, folks.